Okay, well, let's get started. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for attending today's webinar regarding Country Club Way. My name is Laura Kaifas, and I'm with the Tempe Neighborhood Services Office. I'll be helping out with hosting today's meeting. Uh, with us today, we have Chase Wallman. Uh, he's a senior transportation planner with the city of Tempe. Ray Carranza, he's our design consultant with HDR. They'll be our presenters. Also with us, we have uh, Jason Harrington, also with HDR. Uh, Kathy Hollow, she's a principal civil engineer in traffic engineering. And Robert Yabez, uh, another transportation planner. And I believe we may be joined by some others in a bit, uh, but that's who we have on right now. Uh, today's meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the website tempe.gov forward slash country club way path, uh, probably late Monday. Before we get started, some information on how to participate. Uh, after the presentation, we'll have a question and answer period. You can either type your question in the chat or in the Q&A section, and I will read them for the team to answer, or you can raise your hand and I will unmute you so you can ask the question yourself. If your question is related to a specific slide, you might wanna jot down the slide number to facilitate that discussion. So to raise your hand, find your name in the participant list and hover over it. The hand icon will appear, click on it. This will put the icon by your name. You can click it off once your question has been answered. If you're on your cell phone, please click the chat bubble. If there are many raised hands, I will try and call on participants in the order received, but have patience. Uh, please note that comments that are made in the chat or anywhere else on the website, uh, the meeting website today will not be logged as official comments. We really need you to go to tempe.gov forward slash forum and enter your remarks there. Uh, the comment period for this topic will be open as of now and it will go until March 7th. Okay, I think that covers it. Chase, handing over to you. Great, thank you, Laura. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chase Wallman, transportation planner with the city of Tempe. And thank you for joining us and taking part of your Saturday today to give feedback for our 30% design of our country clubway bike and pedestrian improvement project. Uh, I will be giving the first part of this presentation just to give a brief background of project history, as well as go over some of the public input summary that we received from our first round of public meetings. And then I'll be handing the reins over to Ray Carranza, who is a project manager with our design consultant HDR, who will talk more about uh, our 30% design. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. As a refresher for those who may not have uh, joined us for the first round of public meetings, this is a three and a half mile uh, bike and pedestrian improvement project, which is generally along Country Club Way. The project. Uh, to the south starts at Warner Road, uh, connecting ASU Research Park and Discovery Center. It continues north and crosses the Western Canal uh, and continues passing Fuller Elementary Optimus Park, the El Paso Pathway, and then terminates at the US 60 at Clark, uh, Clark Park and the US Pedestrian Bridge. So this project will include a concrete multi-use path and adjacent equestrian trail from Warner Road to Elliott Road. And then all the improvements in the road are gonna be more of your on-street improvements, improvements, which would include uh, bicycle lanes, uh, potential cycle track, shared lanes, traffic calming elements, improvements to ADA directional ramps, uh, the implementation of rest nodes, a new pedestrian signal at Warner, uh, as well as the inclusion of public art and then a just a quick update on the public art front. This is something that we wanted to get incorporated into the project early on in, in the design at this 30% level. So the city has requested proposals uh, for public artists in this and a selection panel has narrowed down candidates to three finalists for artists. So uh, selecting uh, the selection panel will soon be selecting a artist that will join the design team and incorporate public art into the project moving forward. 
Some more project history, it was this Country Club Way project was originally identified in the Transportation Master Plan 2015. Our Transportation Commission recommended we move forward this project to compete for preliminary design assistance funding, uh, which is grant funding that we received uh, just over 82,000 to develop the preliminary design uh, and get initial public feedback and understand the project costs for the ultimate project. Held public meetings in 2017 and finished that preliminary design, understood what the project cost would be to implement. And in 2018, we pursued a federal construction grant from FHWA and we were subsequently at just over 2.6 million to construct the project from Warner Road to the US 60 uh, in 2022. So we kicked off the final design in 2019 and we, uh, we suffered some delays being able to hold public meetings due to the impacts of, of COVID-19, but finally held our first round of public meetings in October of 2020. And that was on uh, some preliminary design alternatives that we developed uh, a 15% level design. And uh, with that, we reiterated the design coming to you for this public meeting for the 30% level design. This is going to be a, a video flyover of the project corridor starting at Warner Road on the south end of the project. And in this video, we'll be going through the alternatives presented in the previous round of public meetings and which alternatives were ultimately uh, selected as the preferred alternatives based on the feedback received. So this first segment is the Warner to Elliott Road section. This is our multi-use path and equestrian trail section. The two alternatives, one was a multi-use path on the west side of our 40-foot easement along the west side of ASU Research Park. And this differed from the bottom alternative, which was ultimately the preferred alternative to have the multi-use path on the east side of the concrete uh, uh, of the easement. And this alternative was heavily favored the property owners adjacent to the segment from Elliott to Warner. Um, and it, they cited having a, an increased buffer in between their, their property walls and some of the multi-use path users and some of the amenities. This is approaching Elliott Road in the Shutterfly Way section. We presented a side track, a side path alternative or a two-way cycle track. Ultimately, the, um, the two-way cycle track alternative was the preferred alternative. We're moving to West now and going into more of the residential neighborhood. This alternative uh, introduced either a standard bike lane with parking or buffered bike lanes through the removal of a west side parking lane. Ultimately, the removal of the west side parking lane to introduce buffered bike lanes was the chosen alternative for this section between Western Canal and Guadalupe Road. So now we'll be going from Guadalupe Road up to the US 60. So this next segment is from Guadalupe to Watson before we make our, our turn along the Watson curve. And this, uh, the, these alternatives that we presented, uh, we'll be presenting again as well, since uh, unfortunately we, we omitted this, this alternative from our last survey. So we still need to get feedback on this, this alternative. So this is something that we'll be asking for feedback as, as well in this, this round of public meetings. So this Guadalupe to Watson section either has uh, bike lanes with parking or a shared lane with a buffer between vehicles, park vehicles and the vehicular shared lane with bicyclists. And then finally, this is the Watson, the US 60 section. This is the, the tightest corridor that we have. So unfortunately we weren't able uh, to fit in dedicated bike lanes in this space, given how, how tight the curb to curb distance was. Uh, so the options presented here were either a more narrow shared lane, which had a buffer in between the parking or a wider shared lane uh, without the buffer in between the parking. And this was for the entire section from Watson Drive uh, 60. And now we'll be approaching Baseline Road. So beyond the A and B alternatives that we had for the public to select, uh, we also took out some common themes 
uh, regarding uh, some of the written comments that we received. So any kind of the duplicates or, or trends that we saw in the written comments, uh, we pulled it out and, and summarized it here. So the first topic, uh, one of the themes in, within the written comments was the uh, proposed pedestrian signal at Warner. And what this would be is a signal that's um, actuated, activated uh, only when a pedestrian uh, bicyclist or, uh, or even a, a horse user uh, activate the signal. Otherwise, the signal is not on. So generally, that would take around 30 seconds for that phase to complete for pedestrians. And this is shown in the in the blue line is what our project alignment is. This red line uh, is Fairfield Lane. This is an entrance to the Circle G Ranches neighborhood. And then on this right side of this icon of a signal, this is the signal at River uh, River Parkway. So this is the, the only signal that we have in between McClintock Drive currently and Price Road is this River Parkway. So some of the opposition to introducing a pedestrian signal uh, were the potential for hinder from Fairfield Lane onto Warner Road from the Circle G Ranches neighborhood. Uh, additional concerns included directing path or equestrian trail users from the project into the private facilities of Circle G Ranches neighborhood, uh, as well as a concern about the redundancy, uh, potential redundancy with the parkway and introduction of any, any safety issues or hazards because of that, that signal. Support, uh, supportive comments to uh, the proposed signal included uh, a, a lack of connectivity for uh, the project corridor for south of Warner Road uh, and the, the little signals uh, west of this area until McClintock Drive, and then the increased safety and comfort uh, for being able to cross uh, Warner Road with a dedicated pedestrian signal. Uh, so with with these written comments, it was obvious that we needed to to go back and review with uh, not only our city traffic engineering team, our city traffic engineer, uh, as well as with our design consultant and their traffic engineer to understand uh, what the or what the impacts were to introducing this pedestrian signal, and to make sure that the delayed data that we in the beginning of the project uh, was still was still um, the current conditions that we that we saw today. So with that, uh, one of the things that we did was uh, collect uh, turning movement counts along Fairfield Lane. And this was to better understand the, the concern raised about uh, potentially impacting the turning movements in Warner Road with the introduction of the signal. So with this, we took these counts in the AM and PM uh, peak hours, understanding that this likely represented a 30% reduction in in traffic volume, what otherwise seen from the pre-pandemic conditions. So these were conducted from 7 to 9 a.m. and 4 to 6 p.m. on Wednesdays and Thursdays for the last. Uh, and what we saw was a range from 17, an average of 17 um, to 28. Uh, the lowest being that that westbound turn onto Warner Road. Uh, from Fairfield Lane, and some of the heaviest turning movements that we saw were uh, eastbound Warner going bound onto Fairfield Lane. So with that, uh, we discussed what those potentials, potential impacts would be with our traffic engineering team. And uh, some of the concerns, which I wanted to, to outline here, uh, the first being the turn after understanding what the turning movement counts were currently and what this impact would be to those by putting this pedestrian signal along the project alignment. And uh, the traffic engineering review of that was that it would actually benefit um, benefit these turning movements by placing the signal, and that was because it created larger gaps. Um, so if you imagine this west, this eastbound traffic would be stopped during the pedestrian signal, uh, which would allow this this larger gap to allow for these left turn vehicles onto Warner Road since they would not be 
conflict with any East traffic. So that was that was one improvement that we saw with uh, putting in the traffic signal. Uh, uh, concern was about safety and it, traffic engineering review when we reviewed this was that safety could actually benefit from this larger gap that's being created by the pedestrian signals with vehicles. And this is because you would reduce one of the conflict points of having eastbound vehicles interacting with the, the turning movements off of Fairfield Lane. Uh, in addition to the safety benefits of having a dedicated pedestrian crossing along Warner Road instead of the status quo of either going to River River Parkway or uh, what we saw out there, or at least what I saw out there while I was doing traffic counts was um, still users uh, kind of leapfrogging across Warner Road. In the, in the four hours that I was doing traffic counts, we saw about 10 instances of bicyclists or pedestrians uh, making that crossing here. So it, it seems that this crossing is occurring. So benefit as far as safety concerns for bicyclists and pedestrians making that crossing across Warner Road. Uh, in addition, there may be safety concerns as, as well about introducing a new traffic control device. Something we do with project as well as what we've done uh, with other projects where we introduce a new signal is that will alert the vehicle users well before the signal is turned on by placing signs alerting to the traffic control change ahead. And that's implemented uh, a few weeks before the actual turn on of the signal. So hopefully we could get vehicle users acclimated to this new traffic control device that would be put in place. Uh, another concern raised was regarding the directing of users this project into the private facilities of Circle G ranches, and that's to the east here at Fairfield Lane. Um, I, it, that might have been a miscommunication from the um, of, of public meetings, but uh, I wanted to clarify that we are not making any improvements south of Warner Road or going east of this proposed pedestrian signal. The extent of our project is this orange line uh, where we will be widening the south to 10 feet to Kenwood Lane and making these directional ramp improvements. Um, so we will not be directing users east to Fairfield any wayfinding signage, direct, direct users found. Uh, this is an a set it and forget it kind of uh, implementation. So traffic engineering team will continue to monitor the conditions and the flow of traffic and they can adjust the synchronization of the nearby River Parkway uh, to account for challenges with flow as well. So this is something we'll continue to monitor and our traffic engineer the ability to be able to adjust the synchronization if necessary from the nearest signal parkway. Uh, we also looked at, uh, we were also asked to look at alternative locations for signal. Uh, we are currently looking at a, uh, alternative of a traffic signal at Kenwood Lane, uh, though we suspect that it will not be warranted uh, for a full traffic signal. So that was another location just west here at Kenwood Lane. Uh, we're currently studying that and it could be introduced alternative if it's deemed to, to meet the warrants for a traffic signal, though the traffic engineering suspect that it, it may not meet that warrant. With that, we are, uh, Proposing to move forward with the current alignment shown here of that pedestrian signal, the project alignment, and then directing users west towards Kenwood Lane with those sidewalk improvements. Another common theme that we received from the written comments was uh, the concern about removing is that kind of line the east end of our easement for the multi and equestrian trail section from Warner to Elliott. Uh, so with that, we conducted a tree inventory where we looked at the health of the trees, the size, the, the helper size, the type, and the location to the pathway from these trees. So this really identified which trees would be in conflict with the path. And with that, 
we identify 36 trees, which are shown by these, these red symbols here. So you'll see that in the plan views. And as we go over the design more, and we have these materials available online, so you can see specifically uh, which tree we're, we're impacting. But we identified those trees that are in potential conflicts with the path location. Uh, so that would that amount six trees that were identified for removal or relocation. Uh, but with this, we'll also be specifying 158 new trees. Uh, the final common theme that we saw were comments nodes, and those were uh, specific to concerns about the red zones being directly adjacent to private property walls, uh, the lighting underneath the rest nodes, and the, uh, the seating type that we had in the rest nodes, as we were showing more of a more of a seat wall previously in the first round of public meetings. So with that, we adjusted. Uh, all the rest nodes so that they are not adjacent to any property wall or uh, they were located here at Citation Lane in Buena Vista. They have since shifted. This is a zoom in of one of the rest node locations along ACU Research Park uh, where we have this buffer space to the west and then we have the existing alley and then west of there property walls. Um, so we adjusted the locations of those as well as uh, introduced canopy lighting underneath the rest nodes and change the seating so that it was more individualized and raise that more as we move forward in this in this PowerPoint. So in summary, we uh, we showed in this first public meetings these alternatives for these five very distinct segments. And with that, we were left with this for the second round of public meeting in our 30% design. So in Watson, we had a preferred alternative for a shared, which introduced a buffer in between the parking and the shared lane from Guadalupe to Watson Road or Watson Drive. This is the segment that we were asking for additional feedback on whether we have a shared lane with that buffer and parking or to a dedicated bike lane with parking directly adjacent. The Western Canal to Guadalupe Road section that was the buffered bike lane alternative with one lane of parking maintained on the east side of Country Club Way from Western Canal to Guadalupe Road. From Elliott Road to Western Canal, uh, we are asking for feedback on two alternatives still, and that is the preferred alternative from the last round, which was a cycle track, and then a new alternative, which is the introduction of buffered bike lanes along Shutter Flyway. And then finally, the Warner Road to Elliott Road section, the alternative that was the preferred alternative was to maintain the equestrian path on the west side of the easement and introduce the concrete multi-use path on the east side of the easement. And with that, I will hand it over to Ray Carranza from HDR and who will take over 30% level design. Thank you, Chase. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so yeah, go through the 30% uh, uh, design. Um, what we have is like a series of of, um, of videos. We'll start on the south segment and then uh, as we move um, at Warner and then we'll move north towards uh, the US 60. Um, so here, uh, before we start the video, here's the, the Warner to Elliott segment. Um, and what we have here is kind of like an aerial. I believe this was taken in uh, uh, 2019. Um, on the aerial, we have um, some shapes and uh, some colored shapes, and these kind of identify uh, some of the 30% items, 30% uh, design items that um, we want to present to you today. Uh, stuff in the shapes in orange are tip will be the ramp, um, sidewalk ramp reconstructions. Um, as Chase mentioned, we have a sidewalk here from Kenwood to the proposed pedestrian signal. Orange or any uh, sidewalk improvements are shown in orange. Uh, our multi-use path is shown in a light, a light blue, and the question path is in a kind of darker blue. There, uh, we also have the shade nodes identified as as yellow circles. And then, um, as we move forward, we have also um, as we move forward towards north of the of the segment of the corridor, we also have some traffic calming measures uh, that we kind of show in a uh, kind of like a purple shade um, shade color um, with that uh, we can go ahead and start the video 
um, and then we'll kind of walk through the, the corridor. Uh, so here in order, we have the pedestrian signal, as Chase mentioned. Um, what you see in red circles, those are the um, uh, field verified trees that would be within the multi-use path area. Uh, this segment between Warren and Elliott, we were doing all our improvements within a 40-foot uh, public utility easement corridor. Um, here we're passing Breno Vista. This is one of the first um, community connection points to the project, to the path. Uh, that's existing, and there's another one here on Citation, which is another uh, connection to the uh, adjacent neighborhood to this path. Um, and then as we move north of Citation, we have our another, our second node, which you see there. Um, and then we have our third shade node here at Elliott. So there's three of them, three shade nodes here in this segment. And then here we are at Elliott, um, which um, just recently um, constructed some new uh, signals at this location. We're not planning to make any changes here other than uh, new sidewalk ramps to connect the um, um, the west side of Elliott to uh, um, uh, to north of the um, North towards Shadow Five to uh, to make that connection for the pedestrians and bikes. Um, site, please. So this is uh, Elliot to Western Canal. We have um, uh, two two options here that we're looking at. Here we're starting uh, on the left side. We're starting at Elliot, moving towards um, uh, Western Canal. Um, this is the uh, buffered bike lane. It, uh, alternative that we're looking at. So we, you'll have two buffer bike lanes, one on each side of the road, and you have your lane in each direction. The existing sidewalk will remain on the west side. And as we approach the cul-de-sac up north, um, we're doing ramp reconstruction there to kind of promote the north-south movements of the, of, the, of the bikes. And then here on the right side, this is the option that was presented at the last public meeting where you have the cycle track, the two-way cycle track on the west side, and then you have the lane, the one lane each direction traffic on the on the east side here. And the cycle track and the travel lanes would be separated by, by a buffer. And here we're moving south to um, to Elliott. The existing roadway width curb to curb here is uh, 48 feet here for, for Shutterfly. So this segment is Western Canal Guadalupe. From the cul-de-sac to Western Canal, there is a 12-foot existing multi-use path um, that's, that's there today. Uh, we are not... It's, as part of the scope of this project, we're not making any um, modifications to that. And then as we approach Western Canal, um, there's another project that's uh, currently in design um, that's improving the Western Canal um, path. Um, and in this location, that uh, that project, I believe the scope of that project is to, I think they're doing some grading, they're inducing another node, a shade node structure in this, at this location. Um, north of the Western Canal, um, there's some sidewalk improvements and some ramp improvements. So, um, so we'll be tying into that, into those improvements. And then as we move north, uh, north of Diamond Drive, um, this is kind of the start of where we have, um, uh, where we've identified existing sidewalks that uh, need to be reconstructed for to be ADA compliant. And that's what you see there in orange. Uh, can start the video, please, Chase. Um, and then in this section uh, between Western Canal and Guadalupe, uh, this is the alternative we're moving forward with: is the buffered bike lane on the on the west side, and then we'll have the um, buffered bike lane on the right on the east side with one lane of uh, of parking. Uh, in this segment, uh, there's existing um, privacy wall along both sides, uh, so no uh, private driveways connecting. And in here, you see that 
two orange areas, that's a, um, a raised median. We're utilizing that as a traffic calming measure as we approach uh, Guadalupe Road. So as we go, you know, go through, progress with the design, you know, we, we're trying to identify areas where we can uh, you know, implement traffic calming measures. And here, the area south of Guadalupe is one of the areas where we, um, um, we're trying to implement that. And then before we go to the next slide here at Guadalupe, where we're doing some intersection improvements here in the form of um, reconstructed traffic signals to conform to current standards. Uh, we'll also be um, looking at the pedestrian push buttons to be ADA compliant, um, replacing the uh, existing sidewalk ramps from single to directional. So that's going to happen on all four uh, quadrants and some um, new. Um, video detection equipment on all four legs for traffic monitoring. So next slide, please. Okay, so here's the Guadalupe to Watson uh, segment. So we're starting off at Watson up north and then we're moving south to Guadalupe. On the right, on the um, left side here, we have the um, shared lane. <clears throat> Uh, shared lane with uh, with buffered and also parking on both sides and then on the um, right side we have the um, bike lane with uh, with the uh, travel lanes with with no buffer uh, this segment is uh, 44 40 foot foot wide there's existing private driveways um, that tie into this section and parking is not currently prohibited. So in both options, uh, we would still allow for parking on both on both sides. And here we are, this is the Watson to US 60 uh, section. Uh, this is the, the Chase mentioned earlier, this is the narrow section at, uh, at 40 foot. Um, uh, 40 foot width from curb to curb. Um, yeah, let's roll the video, please. So this section here we have, uh, due to the tight corridor, uh, we're, we're we're proposing the shared um, the shared lanes um, buffered with parking on both sides. Um, so in existing conditions, there's, there's private driveways that tie into this roadway, and there's uh, on-site parking. So with this option, uh, with the alternative we're moving forward with, uh, we're still maintaining that um, 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 the, the parking on both sides. And as we approach baseline road, uh, we also um, uh, looking at implementing some traffic calming measures in, a, in the form of uh, curb extensions, and then north of road intersection in the form of um, 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 median. And similar to Guadalupe at Baseline Road, uh, we're looking at the reconstructing the traffic signals, upgrading ramps, and uh, looking at pedestrian ADA um, access to make it compliant. And then we're approaching towards the north termini of the project at uh, Cole Park, where we have our fourth uh, shade node structure. Um, as we as we approach um, Carson Drive, there's our fourth uh, shade node structure, and then north terminal is um, the U.S. 60 pedestrian bridge. Um, so now we're getting to the uh, uh, landscape and shade node concepts. So those air um, those areas in the in the video we you saw like a, um, those those yellow areas. So this is kind of the example of one of the um, concepts we're looking at. There's, we have two different options that we want to show you. Um, so basically it's a, a shade node structure with a uh, non-fabric top to kind of um, provide shade. Um, there'd be a um, seating covered there in this in this picture. Would there be seating? Other menus would be drinking fountain, um, 
there'd be um, some bike racks. Um, and uh, this is the area where we would uh, kind of work with the local artists to, um, you know, implement some artistic features in this area. Um, here, as far as like landscape concepts, uh, right now we're looking at the area on this, on the right, on the left side there, kind of like an example of what we're looking at for the for the landscape concept. Um, putting in as much as possible as much as possible, looking at um, native low water use um, variety plants and trees. Um, um, and then these stage notes will give um, people to recover and rest. Um, and, um, you know, also looking at implementing some some LID like low um, some water harvesting features to you know capture rainwater and and um, irrigate some of the planting features there. So a lot of different things, a lot of different things that we're going to be uh, implementing here. So I'm looking forward to hear people's input on what other amenities they would like to see here. This is kind of an example of two different options we're looking at. Um, so, like I said, we'll be working with the local artists to maybe uh, just add some some unique items to to the road areas. But um, um, yeah, really excited to kind of present this all to you. And before we move off of this, this is kind of looking south of the project. You can see the private existing privacy wall on the right side. Um, and then your multi-use path is kind of like on the far um, far left side there with the question path in between the multi-use path and the and the in the wall. And with that, I'll, I'll toss it over to Chase to kind of talk about next steps. Yeah, thank you, Ray. So our next steps, we have this public meeting today, and we will have another public meeting of the same materials on February 24th next week. Uh, this will round out our, our public feedback for the 30% design. So we will gather that public feedback and reiterate the design uh, once more to get to a 60%. Design. We presented so far to date uh, internally with city departments, as well as our transportation commission and sustainability to incorporate their feedback into this project. And we'll be going again to the Transportation Commission uh, on May 11th. We'll be holding a final round of public meetings for feedback in May or June. Of and then we will wrap up the final plan specs and estimates and get ready to uh, advertise the project for bids in late 2021, early 2022 with anticipated construction starting early 2022. And again, uh, the at www.tempe.gov slash forum, your recorded comments and give us feedback on all these materials that we presented. Uh, in addition, you could zoom in. I know these videos were kind of hard to track. Um, so if you go to our project webpage at country club way path, tempe.gov slash country club way path, you'll be able to view materials, including the plan views, by side comparisons of the rest nodes and our landscape concepts. And then to the right is my uh, email and phone number if you have any uh, additional questions aren't answered in this presentation. But I know we will, we're about to open it up to, to Q&A. So I thank you all for, for joining and giving your feedback today for the Country Club Way project. Okay, so we have some questions in the chat. Uh, I'll start with the first one. Uh, Ryan asks, will there be noise from the Warner signal? Uh, I, I, I could let uh, I could Ray or Kathy, our city traffic engineer, answer. I believe that the only noise would be essentially from the countdown of the pedestrian um, beacon of the signal. Uh, I'll, I'll let them clarify. Correct. It would like we would likely put in a um, accessible signal. 
And uh, so it's only when it's actuated and it would, it's, gives a beep so that um, people who are site challenged can make it across the street. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, we have another one from Mikkel. Will you be removing any trees along Warner in the orange area? We hope no mature healthy trees will be lost. We lost a lot in Estrada Park that have not been replaced. Yeah, in the in the in the Warner to Elliott section, which I believe we had uh, color coded as the orange section that you're referring to, uh, we currently identified trees that would be uh, identified for either removal or relocation depending on the health of the tree. Uh, so there, there there will be some that will be impacted by this project and we have so you can zoom in and see specifically which trees are impacted. We identified those on our plans that will be available on the country club way path website. So you can zoom in and see exactly which uh, which trees identified for removal or relocation. So with that section, we had 36 trees that were identified for either removal or relocation, um, but we will be specifying 158 new trees. We have another question. Uh, this one's from Jeff. Will video equipment proposed to be installed at Guadalupe include bicycle detection? Uh, so that is that is becoming our standard. We haven't really designed that signal yet, but that um, that is becoming our standard to use um, video detection for all users. Uh, well, except pedestrians, and the technology is not quite there yet, but it can detect bikes and um, vehicles both. Thanks, Kath. Uh, and another one from Jeff. Are there any vertical barriers and in, in front uh, soft hit? Plan to be installed in the buffer area along the cycle track on the Shutterfly segment. Yeah, this is Ray Carranza. Um, yeah, there could be some. Uh, we're looking at looking at the, some delineators to kind of just delineate that that buffer. Um, uh, but uh, it wouldn't be anything more than that. It wouldn't be like a solid barrier going uh, going across. But you know, delineators is a possibility. Thank you. Um, okay. This one is from Kathleen. Will any steps be taken to slow traffic between Guadalupe and Watson? Speeding is a safety issue. And part of it got cut off, but I think you kind of get the gist of it. Yeah, uh, the Guadalupe to Watson section, that's where we currently have the uh, we have, I think, three speed cushions that exist today along that. Uh, we could have our traffic engineering team review as well as what the what the speeds are. So we can we can conduct uh, if if one hasn't been done already, we can conduct a speed analysis and we can review with our traffic engineering team about what additional measures could be incorporated in this project beyond those speed cushions that exist today. Thanks, Chase. Uh, okay, we have one from Mikkel. Have you seen any horses on the path when you observed and did counts? Just checking because there's one in the drawing, but we haven't seen one in years, except one mini pony the size of a big dog by the lake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from from my accounts, uh, the the four hours that I was there, I didn't I did not see any equestrian users uh, along the much. the path. Just pedestrians and some bicyclists. Nor did I. I don't think I don't think we observed any. We were out there um, two different days at the morning and afternoon peaks. So not in those two days anyway. Uh, four days. Another four days. Yeah, four days. The path is an exclusive for um, equestrians. It's a soft surface path for joggers as well as cyclists. Thanks. Uh, another one from Kathleen. Can you address how access will be maintained to private driveways during construction? Um, maybe I'll take that one. Um, generally, when we're doing any kind of construction, we do our very, very best to keep uh, access to everyone's private driveways, whether they're businesses or homes. Uh, generally, steel plates are used if there's any trenching or anything like that. But um, 
we'll we'll let you know well in advance about what's going to happen and uh, send out postcards and updates during the whole construction process. Anyone want to add on to that? Feel free. Okay. Mikkel, thanks for putting the equestrian track by our fences, as that is what the neighbors next to the fence prefer instead of the multi-use path. Much appreciated. Uh, another question from Eric. Uh, as of now, the west side of Warner Elliott section closest to the wall is just dirt. Will there be landscaping bushes or trees in that area? Yes, yeah, um, yeah, we are. Yeah, Jason, was that, was that you, Ray? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say we are um, landscaping that section. And, and in addition, we wanna do our best to screen. So we're looking for the opportunity to be able to put trees in between that equestrian tree and the property walls, just to have the added benefit of screening. And if Ray or Jason wanna add anything, anything additional to that. I think you covered it, but yeah, I mean, Jason, if you want to kind of give provide more detail on what type of trees. Um, sure. Be helpful. We have Jason Harrington with uh, Harrington planning and design um, that's on our team uh, as the landscape uh, designer. Yes, we're, we're working with both ASU research park um, staff and with the city of Tempe arborist to identify the most appropriate trees that. Or low water use provide the visual screening that we're looking for um, from the first meeting uh, input that we received. Uh, things that are low water use, low maintenance, provide uh, vertical clearance for cyclists um, as well as equestrians, uh, and then also not um, create a future condition uh, with uh, any of the uh, path maintenance or wall maintenance. Okay, I have a couple uh, comments here that I think are clarifying to maybe their questions previously. Uh, one from Mikkel, she says, I mean along Warner Road east to west where you said there will be a ramp. So does that relate, Mikkel, to maybe, you know, Mikkel, maybe I'll unmute you and you can clarify. Mikkel, yes, you are. Or, yes, I was asking about um, the trees along the south side of Warner Road between the pedestrian crossing line and Kenwood when I asked the first question, not the ones going um, up to Elliott. Will those trees um, be able to remain? Or, are you having to remove some of those for the new ramp or whatever you're putting there? You said you're widening the sidewalk. This is uh, Ray. Um, so we have those surveyed. We'll need to take a closer look. I, I would need to kind of see how that fits based on the caliper size of the tree and the um, and the path. Um, there is a landscape buffer between the existing wall and that uh, the existing um, um, sidewalk that's out there today. Um, uh -huh. So it's it's something we'll need to take a, a close look at. I don't have the exact measurements in front of me right now, okay. but it's, um, but we'll definitely take a closer look at that. And then we'll, okay. if, if there's a way to design it, not to impact it, then we would. Yeah, we for sure. That, that's one of the greatest things about this area. If you drive along Warner Road, the great big trees on both sides of the road. And, you know, they used to be along McClintock, but they took a bunch of those out uh, when they built the fire station. So, you know, we want to keep as many as we can, please. Okay, yeah, thank you for the comment. Okay, uh, we have a, Perhaps another clarifying thing uh, from Kathleen. She says speed humps are allowed. Um, I think that was to be added on to the rest of her, or her earlier comment. Um, let's see. We have another question. Uh, okay, we already clarified in the calls. Hang on here. Uh, from Jeff, the buffer contains utilities that will be unlikely to move, I think. Most of the trees will stay. Jeff, did you want to be unmuted, maybe? Okay. Jeff, if you want to clarify, feel free. Yeah, looking along uh, Warner Road, there it looks like there's a couple of uh, electrical cabinets as well as an SRP uh, junction box for irrigation, all along the, the privacy walls. So. 
uh, as that sidewalk widens, it will likely widen towards Warner Road and not towards the trees. Uh, this is Ray. Um, yeah, there are existing utilities with uh, in that corridor. Uh, the SRP junction structure that you referred to. There's also a um, irrigation, uh, like a 42 inch uh, irrigation pipe that ties into that. That kind of follows um, the property line. Um, so those are the things that you know if we're, that we're going to be looking at. Like any vertical conflicts with those uh, with those utilities. Um, but we did look at the signal placement. Uh, uh, able to avoid impacting uh, the irrigation lines um, by kind of moving it closer to the curb line. Um, if we're going to be doing any widening on the side, would, uh, we would maintain that curb line, that using curb line, and then shift it to the, you know, towards the, the property line. So that's the kind of area we need to look at for uh, potential conflicts with trees, which we'll try to avoid. Thank you. Uh, we have another one from Eric. How will the density of the lighting after the project is completed in the Warner Elliott section compare to the current density of lighting in that area? Um, yeah, I can answer that. Um, so currently the existing condition, there are about six of them. There are six lights um, that kind of light up that path. Um, for the Warner to Elliott segments, will that will increase and be able to light up that uh, um, the entire um, corridor um, between Warner and Elliott. Um, again, we're looking at um, um, different lighting types, like directional lighting to kind of away from the adjacent uh, properties. Um, uh, and then also making sure we light up the path and adhere to current lighting guidelines. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Mikkel. What is the planned surface of the equestrian trail? Can it remain dirt? I'll take that one. It's a uh, quarter inch minus material. So it's a, it's a fine aggregate. It's a softer surface for um, um, equestrians as well as compacted enough for cyclists to use. Um, we would not use sand. We would not use earth material. Uh, those things become a, a higher maintenance product. Thank you. I think I've got everybody. Anyone have any questions? Anyone want to raise a hand? Looking. Ray or uh, Robert, I will unmute you. Okay. Oops. Yeah, yeah, my question was regarding the um, the privacy wall uh, along uh, uh, Warner and Elliott. Are you guys planning to do any sort of updates on those walls, painting or uh, raising or anything like that? Uh, for the forty percent design, yeah, we're not showing any uh, any raising any modifications to that wall. Um, they are existing bollards that um, 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 at the Buena Vista and Citation. We'll be looking at those to to make them ADA compliant. Right now, they're really close together where you can't um, where it's not ADA compliant. So that that would probably be the only modifications we'd be looking at. Okay. Thanks. Anyone else have any questions? Okay, I see a comment from Julie. These proposals look wonderful. Will you say that on the forum? Thanks for your thoughtful work. Thanks, Julie.
Any other questions? Marian, I will unmute you. Hey, my question was for um, um, the wayfinding. Um, when we did the initial from Warner to Elliot on that path, the, the equestrian path versus the multi-use path, that equestrian path was indicated it was just for horses, and now I'm hearing it's also for cyclists. So will there be wayfinding directing the cyclists to now use that quarter minus equestrian path versus the multi-purpose path? I'll, I'll take this one guys. <clears throat> There's a yield to um, national standard where everybody yields to horses. Um, and so, so it's a yellow, yellow, little yellow triangle that you typically see on most trails and pathways. Um, it's just, it's a trail etiquette sign. Um, those will be posted as well. So to clarify, there's no, there would be no signage telling cyclists to use the equestrian path versus the concrete multi-purpose path. I'm just wondering how many cyclists will be on the equestrian path versus the other lighted pathway. That's a user discretion and can't be enforced. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Anyone else? Just want to take a minute to remind everyone, please visit uh, tempe.gov forward slash forum and make your comments there. Any questions can also be entered there. Um, we appreciate everyone attending today. We'll give it a few more minutes in case someone is still formulating a question. Well, we're right at about noon. Thanks everyone for attending. And if you have any questions, please feel free to follow up with uh, either Chase or myself or anyone else on the staff. We'll make sure and get you to the person that can answer your questions best. Have a good rest of your day, everybody.